Next up on the Cosmic News Network, first contact with Joshua Putt. Good morning, Earthlings. Good. How you doing today? Good. Good. How you doing today? Welcome morning, to First Contact Radio. Radio. Welcome to First Contact Radio. To talk about all these things I'm talking about is because in life, everything is energy. Every single thing that's out there. Yo, it's First Contact with Joshua Poet. He's the man on the mic, just in case you didn't know it. Covering news from all around the globe, from the weather and space to UFOs. He'll talk politics and make you open your eyes. Conspiracy theories and government lies. He'll dig it all up and try to find the proof. Cause it's time to demand the truth. It's time. First Contact it's time. Radio. We it's have time to demand the truth. truth. It's time. First Contact it's time. Radio. Good morning, Earthlings. How you doing today? Welcome to First Contact Radio. Glad you could be here. Let's jump into today. First thing we want to get to is I'm having trouble with this <laughs> a little glitch here at the astrology page we usually go to. Back in the picture, but today what we have is our sun sign is in Gemini, and our moon sign is it was in Taurus yesterday. It's making a transition into Gemini, so we'll have two air signs, moon sign and a sun sign, both in Gemini. All about communication, words, actions, using the mind, so on and so forth in that regard. All right. So since we don't have a picture, and I really can't show you anything more here about this, we're gonna move on from here. And continue on with our numerology for today, which is the number three. And here's how we arrived at that. We've got the five for the month, 27th, two plus seven, and the 2014 is a seven. So we add those together, they come up to 21, which is a two plus a one, and that adds up to a three. So three is our numerology for today. And again, that process is called theosophic subtraction. Reducing all the numbers down to one single number. And all you do is you keep adding up the numbers until they get to one single number, which it eventually does. So today, our numerology is a three. This is the three here. It is represented by the Empress, which is all about creativity, the imagination. The Leth is the Hebrew letter assigned to this card, which means door. So the Empress is a door which opens into the next realm, allows us into the next realm. The door is our imagination. Okay, so we know some of the other qualities of the threes, expression, imagination, communicators, artists. But on the flip side, the opposite of that, you know, extravagant, a little bit lazy, non, you know, no creativity, you know, everything that would be the opposite of that. If we look at the chart here we could see this is the path right here of the three which is the Empress and this is as I said it's the leth is the Hebrew letter means door well when we enter the crown when spirit enters the crown and moves through it has to pass through imagination pass through this doorway that allows it access into the inner temple here this is the inner temple that resides within all of us and so imagination is bridging together between these two classrooms, a classroom of wisdom and a classroom of understanding. So imagination is the bridge between what we learn and how we apply what we learn to understanding it, because there's a difference. We can learn something and get that book wisdom, but then it's a whole other thing to take that wisdom and apply it and make it useful to understand what it is you learned. And here we have the Gemini going from understanding back to the heart space okay again I you know just want to affirm that this symbol here if you really get associated with that you'll learn a tremendous amount of information about how everything really comes together because this is what it represents ten circles each of these circles are a classroom just think of it as a classroom you go into that classroom to learn the lesson whether it's the lesson of the crown, wisdom, understanding, mercy, severity, beauty, victory, splendor, foundation, or kingdom. And then the paths between the classrooms are here. And we are constantly traveling around this every single day. We have a pillar of mercy, 
We have a pillar of severity, and then we have a pillar of balance. In both pillar of mercy and severity, one of them is masculine and one is feminine, and they contain the opposite principles. So you have male and female on both sides, and the whole idea is you want to mix them all together and walk that middle path. So no matter where you are in this tree, once you understand what classroom you're in, you understand how to get back to the middle. Always find your way back to the middle path. Okay. The current moon phase is just about to that new moon. We're only 1%. Just a slight sliver, and then we're back at the beginning of the cycle again. Today... Tonight it says Comet 209 Linear, the source of Saturday morning's meteor showers, well, minor meteor showers, is close to Earth for the next five days. It was only 13 magnitude as of May 22nd, but if you want to, tr want to try it for, with a large telescope, here's we got some charts and information for you. Okay. The Mayan Oracle, it's a one-tone day, so we're beginning a new cycle here as well. The uh, theme is purification, which is the moon. Whenever there's a one tone, it's always the same guide and the kin. The kin just represents the day, the day kin. You think of your kin as the next of kin, family relations. So this is a way of looking, when you look at this, what is the kin for today? What is our relations with the day? We are related to the day and so on. So this is just showing how we are connected. And then the dog, which is about love, loyalty, that's our like-minded energy. Where the challenge today is the storm, and our hidden power is the human, or free will. The process, or the phrase for today, is I unify in order to purify, attracting flow. I seal the process of universal water with the magnetic tone of purpose. I am guided by my own power doubled. And just to take a look on the Zulkin, see where we're at. This is the grid that you are familiar with when the Mayan calendar is referred to. This is just one of many calendars. It is comprised of, across the top, you have 13, 13 columns. These are in synchronicity with the 13 moons that occur during the course of the year. There are 13 moon cycles that go from new moon to, to new moon, 13 times, not 12 like the Gregorian calendar shows, but actually 13, and each one of these moons are 28 days in length, as opposed to the Gregorian, which is not based on any cycles of nature or time. This one is. And down the side here, you have 20 rows, and these represent the frequencies, the solar frequencies of the sun. And therefore, you have these 20 symbols, so you can look at what they are to understand. So today, we f all we do is we find where we are here, and then we go across, and because the way it counts is you start up at the top, and you count from 1 all the way down, 1 through 13, because you're just counting the 13, using them as the tones, and then once you get to 13, you begin to count over again to another 13, and then again and again. And these cycles of 1 through 13 repeat over and over and over. And so we just go across to see where... The one is for the symbol of the moon, and here's where we're at. So we, we're here today, tomorrow we'll be down here, and you go all the way down to the end of a column, and you go back up to the top of the next column, and you keep counting. And when you get to the very end, guess what happens? You go back and start over at the beginning. So the Mayan calendar is not a calendar that comes to a complete end like Hollywood wanted you to believe when they were telling you you know, the whole Hollywood movie ending that the world's going to end because the Mayan calendar ends. The Mayan calendar doesn't end. It just goes on and on and on because the cycles go on and on and on. Spaceweather.com. Solar wind is currently at 314.7 kilometers per second. Planetary K index. We're in the quiet range at a 1. I don't see really much corona holes. This one's moving away, so it's not really facing us at this point. M-class flare possibilities up to 20%. X-class 1 geomagnetic storm activity is relatively low in mid-latitudes, 1%, 5% and active, 15% in the higher latitudes. That's about it. 
and here we go to the Jewish calendar and 27 liar the name of today Omer count day 42 tonight day 43 because remember sundown is when you begin the count of the next day okay and for a little more insight about today We have some study links here, chapters 120 through 134 of Psalms and the Daily Thought. The Torah and the Jew are one, and a Jew are one, so much so that even a Jew who claims he has no connection with the Torah, when pushed up against a wall, even that Jew will hold the Torah as the most precious thing in life. Okay. So there you have it. That's what we have to get ourselves started for today. Just one little... Uh, bit about all of this information remember we're just looking at energy this is a world of energy all around us and when we can learn how to read that energy it really helps us to understand let's see um you've seen the matrix remember in the matrix how towards the end of the movie um neo was able to suddenly see things differently and he saw all the en around him as energies that's kind of the idea of what we're going for here learning how to look at the energies and so these tools of astrology and tarot and the Mayan calendar there's simply that just tools ways in which we can look at the energy so the pictures and the symbols which have been used throughout the course of human history to tell stories are simply there to represent different phases of energy not at any point in time are you supposed to give up your your power to any of these because they're only tools and that's where the confusion lies because people will tell you oh you can't study these things because they're against God and all nonsense this isn't against God who do you think all this came from this is understandings of how energy works when you give your power up to these things that's where you're making the incorrect assessment of what these tools are about they're just tools to help you to understand what is going around you and the better you're able to understand them Ultimately, what you find out is you're understanding yourself better because the cosmos all around us is just like the cosmos that is inside of us. Ultimately, also, we find ourselves moving away where we don't need these tools. We look at them, we get some basic guidance, and then we move on. And that's why we only spend just a short period of time at the beginning looking at them. We don't need to go into depth about anything more than what we do get an idea of what's going on and then we move on to make it applicable to our lives alright that gets us started for today UFO news is up next let's get to it this is the UFO news with Joshua Poet alright bunch of good stories here for you today First one comes from Medellin, Colombia. Okay, here's our object in the sky. Object in question, you could see where they were taken from. Looks like we have uh, two different types, one white, one black. There we go, May 21st was the date of the sighting and May 25th. Lower two videos. The first video with a blue sky was taken a few days ago in Medellin, Colombia. And the second video, yellow sky, was taken in the same location, however, was one year earlier. This cannot be a coincidence that the UFO shows up in May on two consecutive years. All right, and it says these are UFO files near Atanasio Girardot Stadium, hours before the final match between the National Junior. And then was national champion, miracle making goal in the last minute. Okay, so there we go. Nice good shot in the sky. Nothing we haven't seen before, right? And then a year ago, back in May of 2013, this was the UFO that was there. Okay. So, is there a coincidence as things back in the same area? I don't know, but it is, and we're moving on. All right, this is Silent Craft over Kings Lynn, UK, May 24th. 
Interesting footage of a strange, silent craft flying across the night sky above King's Lynn in the UK. Recorded on the 24th of May. Witness said a silent UFO, silent craft. Here's one that wanted to be seen. Notice as it changes its frequency and lighting patterns. I'm going to mention the strobe effect. Possible coincidence. Anyway, I'm sure I'd be filming more of it if the USAF wasn't spraying out in the sky every day. And Okay. Right, so we've seen the lights in the sky like this. Airplanes usually have, you know, a red lights on the tails or the wings. This one is different. This one has lights from a couple different places you don't normally see on a plane. Okay, and let's move on from here. All right, here we have some crop circles. We haven't looked at crop circles in a little while. So here are some from 2014. This one goes it's from April 16th. All right. It's a nice good crop circle right there. And let's go down here to one on the 30th of April. Okay, there we go. Nice good circle there. We've seen this image before, haven't we? A large circle with three around it. Okay. And then we go over to May 17th. This one is in Perugu, Italy. Interesting. There we go. A little better look at this one. Again, we always see this. This one it looks like kind of like a butterfly or something with wings in here. But then surrounded by even more kind of stuff. That's pretty cool looking. All right. Now this next one is has to do with the Kim Kardashian wedding. And now you're thinking to yourself, Josh has gone crazy talking about Kim Kardashian and Kanye West. Before you get too uh, worried, this was a picture that they took at the wedding. You can scroll through, and if you want to see all the other pictures from the wedding, go. You're more than welcome to do whatever you want to do in that regard. But this was a picture that was taken that is the interesting one. It's towards the bottom of the page of all their photos, and well, there's a nice collection of UFOs or some sort of lights in the sky there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 of them in this picture. So what were they doing there? I don't know. But again, there they are. This was just over this last week. Here uh, we have uh, Cosmonaut Maria Popovich from Russia. This is information about her and says... Cosmonaut Maria Popo Mar Marina Popovich discuss discusses UFOs. Cosmonaut Maria Marina Popovich, who is a hero of the Soviet Union, holds 102 world records, is in the Guinness Book of World Records, disclosed her personal experience with UFOs and her knowledge of extraterrestrial presence in an exclusive May 23rd ExoPolitics TV interview with Alfred Lambriot Webre. Cosmonaut Marina Popovich who maintained she was not punished nor censured by the Russian military or authorities when she reported these UFO experiences to them and went public, states that she intends to visit the United States to help to convince the U.S. government and Congress along with her fellow U.S. astronauts. The U.S. government and U.S. Congress have maintained a 60-plus year official embargo on UFOs and extraterrestrials. UFO astronauts have been officially reticent to disclose and speak about the personal experiences with UFOs and extraterrestrials and the repressive measures the US government has used to measure to ensure their silence. And this video here itself well, I have a little freezing problem here. This video itself is not doing anything so uh Alright, looks like we're stuck right there at the moment. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to jump away for a moment here, and I'll be right back 
listen to this song while I get things unstuck. This is called Observation. Another alien visitor claimed that his race had been looking in on us for centuries and that they had in fact influenced the course of human history in some rather critical and startling ways. Former Princeton physics professor and NASA astronaut blows whistle on UFOs. Dr. Brian O'Leary was born on January 27, 1940, and passed away on July 8, 2011, shortly after making a big statement. He was a member of the sixth group of astronauts selected by NASA in August of 1967. The members of the group were known as the Scientist Astronauts. Dr. O'Leary received a Bachelor of Arts degree in physics from Williams College in 1961, and a Doctor of Philosophy in Astronomy from the University of California, Berkeley in 1967. He was a Fellow of the American Association for the Advancement of Science as well as a Secretary of the American Geophysical Union's Planetary Planetology Section. Furthermore, he was the Team Leader of the Asteroidal Research Group for NASA's Ames Summer Study on Space Settlements. He was the Founding Board Member of the International Association for New Science as well as the Founding President of the New Energy Movement. He was a fellow at the World Innovation Foundation and a physics professor at Princeton University. Well, here we have some nice, good interview. This is a 55-second piece. Let me go ahead and uh, play a little bit of this for you so you can hear what Dr. O'Leary has to say. There is abundant evidence that we are being contacted, that uh, civilizations have been visiting us for a very long time, uh, that uh, their appearance is bizarre from any kind of traditional materialistic Western point of view, that these visitors um, use the technologies of consciousness, they use uh, toroids, they use co-rotating magnetic disks for their propulsion systems. That seems to be uh, a common denominator of the UFO phenomenon and how they can work, uh, manipulate time and space locally so that they can have their own uh, anti-gravity propulsion and their own uh, uh, field of energy that's isolated, gravitational field, electro-gravitational field that's different. All right, pretty cool, right? There's a lot more to that. I'm going to leave it available to you. And here is a nice, good, long article. It says, if you've had an alien counter, contact a professional. If you're driving down a long road at night, towing a boat on the back with your father beside you, a big blue light appears just over the right side of the car, sort of blinks on. You notice it immediately turns to your father for assurance and you aren't imagining it. He turns around and looks. You can, he can see it too. Unlike you, he wants to drive faster and get away. The orb follows the car for a few minutes before it shoots off into the distance. You do not speak because neither of you nor he can explain what it is you have just seen. But for you, this is just the beginning of a series of paranormal encounters that makes you begin to question your sanity. This is the true story of Giles Campbell, a former geneticist acclaimed with his field in working at C CSIRO, Science, had proved every answer he had ever searched for in life until he began having regular encounters with aliens, with empirical evidence no longer would suffice. Depression and 
cumbered as he his isolation grew. After all, who do you talk to about alien counters without having them doubt your sanity? Ang's Walter resident Mary Rodwell is the answer. She's a ufologist, hypnotherapist, leading researcher, consultant, and founder and principal of the Australian Close Encounter Resource Network. This is what I've learned. We actually all have the ability to perceive a broader spectrum of reality, but not all of us own it. Because we are told unless it is solid, unless you can touch it and feel it, it's not real, she said. There are a lot of things you can't touch, feel, that are real. You can't say what shape love is or what it is. The otherworldly journey Miss Rodwell has embarked upon is remarkable and captivating. Coming from a counseling background, it began when a middle-aged man described by Miss Rodwell as articulate and intelligent sought an open mind to talk to him through alien counters. And then a long article about work she has done and so on. I'm going to leave that for you to read. Just a good example of somebody out there that is well versed in the subject that is there to assist. Alright, that is our UFO news. I'll be back momentarily and we shall continue on. Stay tuned. Come into our circle, great spirit. Fill our souls with peace. So we have heard strange stories throughout science fiction for quite some time. We've seen examples of of this thing called suspended animation in the movies, right? Well, it's becoming a reality. Here we have an article that says suspended animation trials to begin on humans. It says knife and gunshot wounds will be victims will be placed in suspended animation as the first human trials begin on this emergency life-saving techniques. This month, the world's first attempts at placing humans in suspended animation using a new technique will take place at the UPMC Presbyterian Hospital in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, not for space travel, but to save lives. The technique will initially be used by 10 patients whose wounds would otherwise be lethal and will attempt to buy surgeons some time. It works, as suggested by science fiction, by cooling the body, but not by applying an external temperature change. Instead, a team of surgeons will remove all of the patient's blood, replacing it with a cool saline solution. This will cool the body, slowing its functions to a halt and reducing the need for oxygen. Similar f effects similar to this have been seen in accident. Swedish Anna Begenholm survived trapped under a layer of ice and freezing water for 80 minutes in a skiing accident. Japanese Mitsukaka Uchukisio he survived 24 days without food or water by entering a state of hypothermic hibernation. We are suspending life, but we don't like to call it suspended animation because it sounds like science fiction, Dr. Samuel Tishman, the surgeon who will lead the trial, told New Scientist. So we call it emergency preservation and resuscitation. This technique was developed by Dr. Peter Ree, who successfully managed to test it on pigs in the year 2000. 
In 2006, Dr. Rhee and his colleagues published results of their subsequent research. After including fatal wounds in the pigs by cutting their arteries with scalpels, the team replaced the pigs' bloods with saline, which lowered the body temperature to 10 degrees Celsius. All of the controlled pigs whose body temperature was left alone died. The pigs who are warmed back up at the medium speed demonstrated a 90% survival rate. Although some of their hearts had to be given a jump start, the pigs were warmed up slowly and fast, had a 50 to 30% survival rate respectively. Afterwards, the pigs demonstrated no physical or cognitive impairment. Pretty interesting how uh, we're getting to this phase. Suspended animation. We knew we'd see it sometime, right? And here we have a brain implant. Mass Massachusetts general scientists will build brain implants. Boston researchers will build a generation of brain implants under an ambitious Defense Department program aimed at pioneering more precise ways to treat mental illness suffered by combat veterans, including post-traumatic stress disorder, traumatic brain injury, and depression. The 30 billion million five-year project being announced Tuesday is one of the first pieces of President Obama's brain initiative unveiled last year in an attempt to foster a revolution of neuroscience similar to the one that occurred in, when the human genome was sequenced a little more than a decade ago. A second team at the University of California San Francisco received 26 million for their work on the brain implants. Okay, more to the article. You re may recall when uh, this brain initiative that Obama had talked about and, and they put forward into the world, one of the groups involved with this and in charge of the project is DARPA. So it's a militarized project. And shortly after this was announced, you may recall that there was an article that they want to, that the human brain is being mapped. And then shortly after that was an article that they want to take this human brain that they mapped and put it into a robot. And if you go and you look through what DARPA is doing, there's some really intense robots out there. Now they want to put a brain in these things. So we could certainly see that all of these stories that we've heard from science fiction, like the suspended animation and now these cyborgs and these robots coming, becoming human-like, are all something that is becoming a reality with all of this. Are we ready for this? Are we ready for all of this technology and these advancements? Well, time will tell, but in many ways we seem to be a very primitive society and sometimes this technology in the hands of a primitive society might not necessarily be so good. But perhaps we have learned something. We'll find out, won't we? And I guess we'll all find out together. Okay, today we're going to continue on with the study of the Book of Urantia. So where we're going to go today with this, I just took you back to the beginning so you could see how I'm going to navigate around through here. Following this link here that says Study, this takes us to the section with all of the different things we've been looking at. We took a look at the Master Universe, and now we're going to take a backtrack over to the workbooks. Okay, and this time we're going to jump into the section called Science. Okay, and under Science we have five different categories astronomy geology physics and chemistry biology and anthropology so we're going to take a look at the very first one here astronomy and this talks about the overall picture of master universe or vanton which is where we are we're part of this one Okay, here we go. The overall picture of the master universe. Description of a total space. One, space is a bestowal of paradise. Space is neither a subabsolute condition within, nor the presence of the unqualified absolute. Neither is it a function of the ultimate. It is a bestowal of paradise, and the space of the grand universe and that of the outer regions is believed to be actually pervaded by the ancestral space potency of the unqualified absolute. From near approach to peripheral paradise, this pervaded space extends horizontally outward through the north space level and beyond the periphery of the master universe, but how far beyond, we do not know. Number two, paradise is the nucleus of the quiescent zones separating pervaded and unpervaded space. 
paradise is the actually motionless nucleus of the relatively quiescent zones existing between pervaded and unpervaded space. Geographically, these zones appear to be a relative extension of paradise, but there probably is some motion to them. We know very little about them, but we observe that these zones of lessened space motion separate pervaded and unpervaded space. Similar zones once existed between the levels of pervaded space, but these are now less quiescent. Space does not exist on any of the surfaces of paradise. If one looked directly up from the upper surface of paradise, one would see nothing but unpervaded space going out or coming in, just now coming in. Space does not touch paradise, only the quiescent mind space zones come in contact with the central aisle. And if you recall from the picture, that center is the Isle of Paradise that we're talking about. Three, the cross section of total space pervaded and unpervaded. The vertical cross section of total space would slightly resemble a Maltese cross with the horizontal arms representing pervaded or universe space and the vertical arms representing unpervaded or reservoir space. The areas between the forearms would separate them somewhat as a mid-space zone separate pervaded and unpervaded space. These quiescent mid-space mid zones grow larger and larger at greater and greater distances from paradise and eventually encompass the borders of all space and completely encapsulate both the space reservoirs and the entire horizontal extension of pervaded space. If you imagine a finite but inconceivably large V-shaped plane situated at right angles to both the upper and lower surfaces of paradise with its point nearly tangent to peripheral paradise and then visualize the plane in elliptical revolution about paradise its revolution would roughly outline the volume of pervaded space. Space respiration. Vertical extensions of unpervaded space contact contract as unpervaded space is transmitted into pervaded space and the horizontal extensions of pervaded space expand and the converse. We do not know how the actual mechanism of space respiration we merely observe that all space alternately contracts and expands. The respiration affects both the horizontal expansion of pervaded space and the vertical extensions of unpervaded space which exist in the vast space reservoirs above and below paradise. In attempting to imagine the volume outlines of the space reservoirs, you might think of an hourglass. As the universe of horizontal extension of pervaded space expands, the reservoirs of the vertical extension of unpervaded space contract and vice versa. There is a confluence of pervaded and unpervaded space just underneath another paradise. Both types of space there flow through the transmitting regulation channels where channels are wrought making pervadable space non-pervadable and vice versa in the contraction and expansion cycles of the cosmos. So it kind of seems as if it's saying that space is breathing in and out. Everything's breathing in and out. To the description of unpervaded space, unpervaded by those forces, energies, powers, and presences known to exist in pervaded space. Unpervaded space means unpervaded by those forces, energies, powers, and presences known to exist in pervaded space. We do not know whether vertical reservoir space is designed, is destined always to function as the Equipose of horizontal space. We do not know whether there is a creative intent concerning unpervaded space. We really know very little about the space reservoirs, merely that they exist and that they seem to counterbalance the space expansion contraction cycles of the universe of universes. The cycles of space respiration, approximately two billion years. The cycles of space respiration, respiration extend in each phase for little more than one billion Urantia years. During one phase, the universe expand. During the next phase, they contract. Pervaded space is now approaching the midpoint of the expanding phase, while unpervaded space nears the midpoint of the contracting phase. And while we are informed that the outermost limits of both space extensions are theoretically now approximately equidistant from paradise, the unpervaded space reservoirs now extend vertically above upper paradise and below 
another paradise just as far as the pervaded space of the universe extends horizontally outward from the peripheral paradise to and even beyond the fourth outer space level. For a billion years of our ancient time, the space reservoirs contract while the master universe and the force activities of the horizontal space expand. It thus requires a little over two billion Urantia years to complete the entire expansion contraction cycle. So the breathing, this breathing of this universe, two million, two billion years, billion years of inhaling, billion years of exhaling. Errors and distortions of observations and calculations are due to space respiration. The present relationship of your sun and its associated planets while well, disclosing many reflective and absolute motions in space tends to convey the impression to astronomic observers that you are comparatively stationary in space and that the surrounding starry clusters and streams are engaged in outward flight at ever-increasing velocities as your calculations proceed outward in space. But such is not the case. You fail to recognize the present outward and uniform expansion of the physical creations of all pervaded space. Your own local creation, Nebadon, participates in the movement of universal outward expansion. The entire seven super-universes participate in the two billion year cycles of space respiration along with the outer regions of the Master Universe. So it seems to be saying that the whole Master Universe here that we've learned about is all breathing. It's not just part of it, but it seems to be saying all of it. And so if we want to look at how it's all working, we need to take in account that all of it is moving and breathing. It's not a stationary, static-type situation. Errors are also due to angles of observation and other time-space distortions. Although your spectroscopic estimations of astronomic velocities are fairly reliable when applied to starry realms belonging to your super-universe and its associate super-universes, such reckonings with reference to the realms of outer space are wholly unreliable. Spectral lines are displaced from the normal towards the violet by approaching star. Likewise, these lines are displaced towards the red of a receding star. Many influences interpose to make it appear that the recessional velocity of the external universe increases at the rate of more than 100 miles a second for every million light year increases in distance. By this method of reckoning, subsequent to the perfection of a more powerful telescope, so it will appear that these far distant systems are in flight from this part of the universe at the unbelievable rate of more than 30,000 miles a second. But this apparent speed of recession is not real. It results from numerous factors of error embracing angles of observation and other space-time distortions. Greatest distortions are due to opposite direction of revolution in the seven super-universes and the first outer space level. But the greatest of all such distortions arises because the vast universe of outer space in the realms next to the domains of the seven super-universes seem to be revolving in a direction opposite that of the grand universe. That is, these myriads of nebulae and their accompanying suns and spheres are at the present time revolving clockwise around a central creation. The seven super-universes revolve around paradise in a counterclockwise direction. It appears that the second outer universe of galaxies, like the seven super-universes, revolves clockwise around paradise, counterclockwise around paradise. And the astronomic observers of Uversa think they detect evidence of revolutionary movements in a third outer belt of the far distant space, which are beginning to exhibit directional tendencies of clockwise nature. When done in space respiration, work done in space respiration is not space work, not power energy work. When the universe expands and contracts, the material masses in pervaded space alternately move against and with the pool of paradise gravity. The work that is done in moving the material energy, massive creation is space work, but not power energy work. So what that whole section seems to be saying, at least what I'm kind of getting from it, is just talking about this continual movement, that nothing in the universe is static. Everything is constantly moving, and it's moving in and out. It's breathing. So the respiration is talking about the contraction and the expansion. Well, at the same time it's doing that, it also seems to be having these other movements. Some are clockwise, 
some are counterclockwise kind of like the system that we've heard about is wheels within wheels right one's moving one way one's moving the other direction if we look at the Mayan calendar and and their system we see a system of wheels within wheels the zodiac itself is a circle a wheel and there's wheels inside of that so as we look at these variety of systems that we're already familiar with and connect it with this it seems to be confirming what it is we've already been understanding that there is this continual movement that's taking place all around us and our job is to find our place within all of this movement and it would seem to me that as we're going through this shift and the shift that we're going through as everything goes through its movement speeding up slowing down contracting expansion we need to kind of find a way to surf those waves so to speak but finding out how to maintain our place within all of that energetic space that we're in because even though we know that we're here right now in actuality we're just in space upon a a body that is moving at a slower rate of speed that it seems to form a physical body in space when essence is nothing more than the same energy of everything else that's all just moving and breathing and when we find a way within that we seem to be able to be move more efficiently Does all of that make sense I know there's a lot of stuff in here to think about so we're just going to leave it with this for today tomorrow we'll continue on tomorrow I'm going to get into this next section here the Paradise Havona system because we're starting to get closer and closer into understanding more of how these energies move out they seem to from the Paradise Isles outward kinda of like maybe throwing a rock in a in the water I know it's just a very uh, rough example but you know how it rings out you get the ripples seems like this is in some ways describing a process of how the universe is just sort of rippling and breathing and this and that okay so there's the Urantia for today read through you know I'm gonna read through it again just really try to get a good understanding of that okay yesterday I watched this video I'm gonna leave this video for you to watch because it's 40 minutes in length however this is an amazing inspirational video and even tells you inspirational video this is a video of Jim Caviezel you know who he is he played Jesus in the story Passion of the Christ by Mel Gibson and during the course of this interview he talks about his experience on this movie and I'm telling you this man went through a transformation he talks about the physical sufferings that he dealt with he dislocated his shoulder during the course of this when he was doing the last scene um, he was struck by lightning when he was having the scene where he was you know, being beaten there Jesus was being beaten he actually got hit and ended up getting a gash on his side and I mean he just talks about all of the experience that he went through and by the time just listening to this it's just amazing that this man took on all of this experience and you can see that Jesus Christ is moving through this man and his words and watch the video it's it's well worth it you'll find yourself truly inspired by by what Jim has to say and and uh, you know it's just awesome that's all I can say about it it's 39 minutes in length 39 minutes 26 seconds check it out when we get done when you get time later do yourself a favor and take 40 minutes out to watch this and you'll definitely be glad you did alright that brings us to our message for today which comes to us from Hilarion we get a message from Hilarion once a week so this is the one May 25th through June 1st, 2014, by Marlene Sweat Lashoff. Hilarion. Beloved ones, as the energy continues to come in waves, so too does the symptoms your bodies are experiencing. Just when you thought that you were over the worst of them, another round is started. 
Take heart, dear ones, and know that it brings lightness of heart and being as the ancient memories in your cells are brought to the surface to be addressed and released. All that is of sorrow and sadness is being eliminated and in its place comes more refined light. As those at the forefront of this movement and transformation, you are doing a wonderful job of assimilating and eliminating. The ups and downs that you have been experiencing are a part of the process. Listen to your bodies and allow rest when it is needed and for some of you, this reminds you of the story of Rip Van Winkle who wandered into the mountains and slept for twenty years. This too shall pass. Follow your heart in all things for it is the true barometer of what is the right thing for you to do in any given moment. Many of you are going deep within to touch the core of your being and are realizing what it is that you truly desire to experience and create in your experience of life. Follow the joy that these activities bring within you and focus on that state of being. Within every moment lies the seed of infinite possibility and it is you who must nurture and allow the seed to germinate, grow, and flourish in abundance. The well of creativity runs deep within you and you have but to tap into its flow. Tap into the inner child within you and feel the wonder and the magic of your life with enthusiasm. It matters not what chronological age you are at, what matters is feeling the essence of magic and wonder within you as you begin to experience the unfolding of dreams you have had for your life in an earlier time that are now coming into manifestation. Allow yourselves to expand in your consciousness and follow the joy. It is true that many in your sphere of influence are just beginning their process of ascension into a higher consciousness and this can sometimes hold you back from moving forward as you patiently wait for greater awakening within them. Know that you must follow your passion and trust that they will follow. You must realize that being with you in their daily lives is an important part of the greater meaning of life for them. Your enthusiasm lifts up their energy and guides them along their journey. You may not realize this but as you seek the answers to your questions about the mysteries of life upon your planet, you inspire these ones with your example. You are greatly admired and emulated as a living example of a courageous person who lives according to higher principles and integrity of being. The people on the planet are awakening in ever-increasing numbers and this has an effect upon the consciousness of all. Humanity as a whole desires to cast off all that has been keeping them in the dark and want to walk the ways of the light. All that was hidden is now being exposed for everyone to reflect upon, to take what is relevant to them and cast off that which no longer has meaning. This is a never-ending process of growth and expansion. The growth that has taken place within you in the last six months is wondrous to behold and we wait with bated breath to see the changes within you in the next six months. We know that each one of you would not go back to the unawakened state of being for any reason whatsoever even though it means more of your illusions about life on this planet are shattered. As the spiritual journey unfolds in its myriad patterns, take the time to honor yourselves for stepping forward and doing the work required. Give yourselves a pat on the back and celebrate often the many accomplishments along the way, no matter how small they may seem to you. Buy yourselves fresh cut flowers often and enjoy looking at them and the beauty they provide, enrich your lives by being good to yourselves and to those wonderful beings who share your life. All is unfolding in divine timing and you are exactly where you are meant to be at this time. We thank you for your gratitude and acknowledgement of many of us for the next many weeks and we stand by to assist in every moment we are asked. Until next week. I am Hyla Ryan. All right, very nice, very nice message indeed. Lots of good messages, right? You you find that uh, you get value out of those channeled messages? I certainly know that I do. And I notice that there seems to always be a, a common thread that goes through these, which is something I find definitely fascinating and just kind of shows that things are moving in the right direction when you start to see this common thread, common thread of... We're moving, our dimensions are shifting, and this is a time when we can focus where we want to be. And so that's what these meditations, that's what this is all about. So let's go ahead and do our meditation for today. So close your eyes, take a deep breath, and exhale. Take another deep breath, and exhale again. I want you to imagine yourself lying on the ground, looking up into the sky. 
And at first you see the sky and the stars and everything above you and it just seems as if it's stationary. But as you continue to look, you see the breathing that is taking place as everything around you is breathing, inhaling and exhaling. The stars, the planets, the sun, the clouds, the air. You look a lot around at the earth and you see the grass breathing, moving back and forth, the ground, the trees, the rocks. Then you realize that everything is alive. And as you notice this aliveness, you notice a sparkling all around you in everything you look at. A confirmation of all of the movement that constantly takes place. And as you contemplate all of this movement that is taking place, you realize and you understand that that which you are looking at outside of you is like that inside of you. And that same movement is taking place inside your very being. And so you just look and you feel this movement that is continuously happening. And as you feel the movement, and you see the movement, you find your place within this. You understand that all around you is nothing but a sea of energy of many different levels and dimensions and frequencies and densities. And you imagine yourself on a surfboard and you're surfing along these energetic waves of life. So imagine yourself on a surfboard, surfing through life, and just feel yourself gaining your balance on that surfboard. And as you do, you find yourself gaining a balance in life. You begin to find that everything moves and flows smoother for you because you're not walking against the tides. but you're actually surfing on top around and through all of this energy and you therefore become and realize that you too are a part of this movement that is taking place and you begin to understand that there is a wonderful dance a universal dance of energy that exists at all times And so from there on the surfboard you find yourself moving and swaying and dancing with life. And as you begin to dance with everything around you in life you find yourself being happier. You find life unfolding smoothly in front of you. And you feel this giggle turn into a laughter inside of you as you like a small child feel that you understand this great secret and so you just allow yourself to sit within that energy of feeling the good vibes of the world around you and as you contemplate these vibes you understand them to be waves of love waves of love that are existing in all dimensions, in all movements, and as you feel these waves of love flowing all around you, flowing through you, you feel a connection to the universe, and you understand how you fit into this big picture. So as you go forth today, just imagine yourself feeling these waves of energy all around you. And just allow yourself to feel the love that is coming from all sources all around you.
And as you feel this love, feel also the presence of God that exists in everything. An energy that lives in us, around us. An energy in which we live and move and have our being. So allow yourself to experience those feelings as you go through the day. Just to observe how they feel. And let your subconscious mind continue on that journey. Let's bring our conscious mind back to the present moment on the count of three. Three, coming back to the present moment filled with confidence. Two, coming back to the present moment filled with faith. And one, coming back to the present moment Happy, healthy, and whole. Happy, healthy, and whole. Take another deep breath. Exhale. And open your eyes. That's it. That is our show for today, my friends. Thank you very much for being here. Tomorrow we'll continue on with the Book of Urantia, as well as the other bits of information, UFO news and esoteric science and all that other good stuff. Have yourselves an awesome day. Keep loving yourself. Keep loving everyone around you. I love you. I'll be back tomorrow, and we'll continue on from there. Peace. I'm out of here.